Anderson Thiago from New Wave of Traditional Heavy Metal Full Albums. Welcome to another episode of Wave of Metal Podcast. And this is a very special episode because I'm interviewing the first New Wave of Traditional Heavy Metal band and they are going to hate me for this that I saw live and I'm talking about Enforcer. They are releasing a new album called Zenith or Zenith. And we are talking with Olaf Wickstrand, the singer, guitarist about the album but first I need to tell you about Keep It Through Festival I was there for the first time and it was an amazing experience I got so many people come talk to me and say how they like my work here on the channel and it was very humbling and very emotional to me having so many people being touched by what I do here and finding new bands and finding new favorite bands and also having the bands come talk to me and say that I have helped them get to where they are now help them get more fans it was really really a touching experience and I wish I can do it more times going back to keep it true and going to another similar festivals like Up the Hammers or maybe True and High and many of these festivals they are dedicated to the old school heavy metal that's the thing that we like here but Keep It True was it, it will always be my first experience and the heavy metal camaraderie that I felt there it will always be on my mind it was, it's one of my best experience in life seeing those bands, those classic bands playing awesome sets and also witnessing the history of heavy metal being written by watching new bands like Traveler, like Sabir, like Idle Hands performing there in front of many metal heads and uh, let me say that the audience of the opening bands really impressed me because I already knew that many people watched them but I didn't expect it that so many people would uh, be there earlier to see opening bands. I think that the, the bands themselves were amazed by the audience. Besides the bands that played at Keep It True, I also met many musicians that were there as metal fans. I won't remember everybody, but I met people from Smolder. Iron Griffin, Boost Control, Cavalier, Pulver, Witch Hunter, Iron Curtain, War Dogs, Frenzy, Decibel Race, School Wings, War Dress, Defender, Hitten, Molten Chains, Siren Rex, Night Demon, Visigoth. And people from labels, label owners, who are also very important to keep heavy metal going. I've met Enrico and Brigida from Cruz del Sur and Gates of Hell Records, Chris and Andreas from No Remorse Records, Jovita from Metal on Metal Records, Thomas from Iron Shield Records, 
and Florian from Dying Victims Productions. Of course I met more people, friends from the internet, but they are too many to mention here, so please don't take against me if I didn't say your name. But I would like to take this opportunity to mention Andreas, my friend, he drove me there to keep it true, we were together by car, and I don't drive, so he was the only one driving long hours to get us to keep a true festival. Thank you, Andreas. Thank you to all the Greek guys and girls that I shared the guest house in Germany. You were amazing, welcoming among you, even though I don't speak Greek. And if there is a place on earth that I want to visit is Greece because since I started this channel the Greeks are one of the most kind uh, people I met for this channel. I also want to thank of course Oliver Weisheimer for the opportunity of being there at Keep It True. Thank you so much Oliver and you did an amazing job even with all the problems that happened it was still a great festival and I don't have anything bad to say about Keep It True. So one thing I tried to do while I was there was to record interviews with bands for a special podcast episode but due to the craziness of the festival I wasn't able to record with all the bands I wanted to. But still I have a few of them, I think four, and I will share them with you here in this episode. And the first one is an interview with the Finnish band Angel's Word. We are here at Keep It True with Jerry Razors, Lightning Mike, St. Peter and Evil Taker from Angel's Word. Hello guys. Hello. How are you? Hello. How are you doing? Hi. Uh, Rebels Beyond the Pale was one of my favorite releases in 2016. Then the next year you released a seven inch Cardio Rock City. Yep. And how are the things with the band now? We're still working on the second full length album. All the songs are recorded basically and. Uh, uh, next up is the mixing process. Still missing some uh, background vocals, actually. But other than that, it's 95% done, I would say. Yeah, only last Sunday we recorded the guitar part, so... So it's fresh. Yes. Yeah, it's very fresh. Mike was telling me that the style of the album will be a bit different from Rebels Beyond the Pale. What can you tell about this? Yes. Um, Theme-wise, we have moved slightly from the, let's say, post-apocalyptic scenes of the uh, early 80s, late 70s. We are now in the, let's say, 10, 20 years into the future. Theme-wise, sound-wise, we are in the mid-80s, I think. So, similar songs, different sound, bigger choruses. That's what you're looking forward to. And you guys uh, have a label already or are you looking for us? We have a distributor, yeah. I think it's going to come out through... Uh, underground, underground Power. Underground, underground Power, power once again. Yeah. And uh, what about shows and tours? Are you guys planning something? You can tell us uh, about uh, the upcoming in tour. In two weeks, May 10th, we go to Germany. Tension, six shows in Germany and then two at France. Uh, one will be the Courts of Chaos Festival at Gallia or whatever, where the Asterix is from. <laughs> because that's the. No one knows the place otherwise. Yeah, we. Uh, <laughs> 11 days, 8 gigs. Uh, come see us. Great. And when can we expect the album? You think there's a date already, or maybe it's a period of time when when can we expect? Yeah, I'm still looking forward to getting the tracks, but uh, <laughs> but uh, I don't think it's gonna be that long. So maybe when we get all the recordings done, so it's few months, and then printing always takes 
Yeah, the vinyl will take a couple of months. Vinyl makes more time, but, the, the, but we have already done the bass works for one track, so we are quite ready to release the first single and follow that by the second single, so things are looking good. There's one, a, yeah, one there's song is a, basically mixed already. And there's a title. Yeah, the title of the album is Neon City. Neon City, so very Blade Runner kind of. Yeah, exactly Blade Runner. Type I of think thing. the orders for me was that the f last album was going to sound like 81 and this is gonna sound like 86. Yeah. So I'm looking forward to to listen to it. Yeah. And if it's released in 2019, I think it will be there uh, competing for the best of the years. There's some tough, tough albums this year. Yeah. Like uh, one of my favorites was uh, Travelers. Same new album. So I'm pretty uh, excited that the album is coming up probably this year. Yeah, in 2019, that's definite. I will say that summertime is to release them. Yes, that's where we are aiming at. I see no reason why it could not come in the summer. Like the digital version. The LP takes time to be printed. But and if you guys need anything uh, for uh, talking about the album and uh, spreading the news to, to, to everyone, you can count on me every time. That's Just so just call me, send me an email and I will do Great. it. And I can... My initial reaction, it's gonna sound better than any of our uh, earlier releases, so it's gonna be fucking killer. We all hope so, and I have a lot of friends that are Angel Sword fans, uh, friends from the United States that they love your albums, and I think they are... There seems to be a ton of contacts, I think, uh, how far from you? US or so. At least it feels like that. People ask, ask us to play there and we should do a tour. Maybe we should do a tour should, for the next be, album. Yeah. We should Someday. find a promoter who wants to bring us to Yeah, the all, US. all the promoters out there who want to fucking take us on a tour, contact us. Yeah. We're our available. email address is on our website, yeah. so check it up and send us a link. So let's, let's do it. At gmail .com. Dot com. Yes. <laughs> Hit us up. Thank you so much, guys. This is Angel Sword. Bye bye. Thank you very much. Cheers. I still have a few interviews from Keep It True to share with you, but now it's time to start the episode and the interview with Olaf Wickstrand from Enforcer. <laughs> Hi Olaf, thank you so much for agreeing to do this interview. My name is Anderson and I run the New Wave of Traditional Heavy Metal Full Albums channel on YouTube. I always wanted to interview you but I was kind of scared because I know you hate the, the label. <laughs> no, it's okay. I, I don't, I mean, um, like that type of label is something for I would say journalists or maybe fans but you know, no artist likes to be bunched together with with like bands other bands that you don't like so th that's pretty much it why i disliked it but uh you know what i mean so zenith or zenith how do you call it um the american pronunciation is zenith and the british would be zenith i think um so it's up to you okay so zenith was released just three days ago by a nuclear blast how has the reception been so far? Um, overall, pretty great. Um, but there's always also like a bunch of people who think they they know what we should sound like and what we shouldn't sound like, and uh, they seem to be shouting very loud as well. So, uh, but overall, uh, I think uh, like the reactions from people who understand what we're doing is like overwhelmingly great. So, I'm really happy with that. But when you were uh, writing for the album, do you had uh, the idea that the reaction would be kind of divided? Uh, yeah, I think we were very aware of that, especially with bringing in 
like songs like Regrets and Sail On to the concept. Um, that that was definitely like um, like a risk taking a little bit, but I mean, the fuck do I care? I mean, we write music for our own liking and not for anyone else. So uh, I'm I couldn't be more proud over an album. I think it's by far the album that I'm most proud over ever. Uh, I think it has a lot of different atmospheres throughout the album it has a lot of different changes and characteristics in pretty much every song so it's like uh, for me it's like uh, i'm very happy with what we've done it should be like it like a trip to listen to the entire album from start to finish and i think that we that we've been succeeding doing that um, recently you said that zenith is definitely the most ambitious project we ever engaged ourselves in we think all together we spent over two and a half years to write, produce and record it all. We are super excited to finally get this all out for, to you all. Uh, you have established yourselves as one of the household names in heavy metal and created quite a following with your previous albums. Why did you decide to take risks creating something different when you could easily play safe by recording, let's say, Diamonds Part 2? Um. I think this, if it's Diamonds Part 2 we're talking about, I think that Zenith is definitely di like closer to a Diamonds Part 2 than a From Beyond Part 2. Death by Fire and From Beyond are very one-sided and they're very like focused on on, on like the speed metal uh, like uh, aspect of, of Enforcer while Diamonds has a lot of more like hard rock vibe to it, and Zenith also has like a hard rocking vibe to it in, in a lot of songs. So I think that that is what we've been doing actually. But from the Shining Diamonds to the Black Sun, Enforcer Music, and by consequence, the artwork are getting somber by each album. Yeah, but I mean, musically, I, I think that if you compare Zenith to Diamonds, we have a lot of things in common. Um, I think that, for example, Zenith of the Black Sun, the title track is is uh, we thought about it as like a follow up to Katana. Um, it 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 it's like built in the same way. Um, it's an epic story. It's the same the same guy who wrote Katana. The lyrics for Katana has also been writing the lyrics for for Zenith of the Black Sun. Um, and it starts off like I, I think it's very very much similar. And uh, like Die for the Devil could be like Running in Menace Part Two, and uh, like Ceylon has a like very similar vibe to what Walk with Me had, and then you have like Live for the Night, which could be like Thunder and Hell or or Roll the Dice, which which isn't very like far away from from Roll the Dice, for example. So I think that we really have. There's a lot of like things in common, and songs like songs like regrets. You mentioned the the power ballad, and even songs like Die for the Devil, which is arena rock. They have a dark feel to it. Where does this darkness come from? Well, it's just that you know I I think that heavy metal is like it's supposed to be, or supposed to be. I mean. It, it it is a it is like an outlet of anger and frustration and extremeness I think in many ways so so I think like writing dark lyrics is like it's part of the entire concept I mean I never I was never fond of bands like singing about rocking all the night and stuff like that that would be if we did that type of stuff with like if we had a song like Die um, for the Devil and we would call it like rocking in the night party something shit then it would be it would be like almost like making parody of the music rather than bringing something like bringing something that we want to say with it i think you know and if it's something that i don't like it's like parody music or generic music music that is so generic and 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 predictable it's like uh, it almost comes out as a joke. And I want to be like the exact opposite towards that. We're talking about old albums and just like From Beyond, 
Zenith brings a song originally from Tobias Side Project, Terminal, uh, Regrets, we mentioned it, and recently Jonas released an AOR, Hard Rock Project called Forever, mm. and some of the songs in Zenith, like Die for the Devil, follow that same line. Is it wrong to think that the side projects are in some way influencing <laughs> enforcement? Um, not directly, but I mean, the side projects, I, I guess, kind of assess a little bit of of what we listen to apart from 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 what is obvious from from listening to enforcer. So if uh, I mean, I would say that we we all drift. Like you always, you you, you go you go through periods. So you listen to different types of music and uh, different types of music inspire you in 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 some times and some some other music can inspire you some other times so i mean but maybe it tells a little bit about where like jonas and tobias have been going in 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 like in in terms of listening to music and that of course also affects us enforcer i just think that it's very important to be as open as you want uh, or as you possibly can when it comes to music otherwise you will lose out a lot if you're if you're not like open to to great ideas because what it's all about eventually is like writing good songs and not kind of what genre you play, you know? I watched the track by track video uh, that Nuclear Blast put out on the channel. And you mentioned that uh, there, were, there were a time you were only listening to uh, Scorpions, Savage Amusement, and Europe, Out of This World, and this kind of music so i see what you mean there when you say that sometimes you are listening to only one thing and that influences you yeah yeah it goes in periods definitely yeah now it's time to listen to the first and fourth song of the day and olaf chose thunder and hell that seems like a song that people appreciate
my first Enforcer concert was in Fortaleza, Brazil, my hometown. Therefore, I know you have many fans in South America. As soon as you announced the Spanish version of Senate, I knew it was something focused to these fans. How did this idea come up? Oh, it's, it's an idea that's been growing on me for a really long time. It was like a friend of mine who did a similar thing for his pop band. Um, and he like he broke the idea to me. And then I was like thinking about it for a little while since I've been like learning Spanish for the cu past couple of years. Figured now would be like the right time to do it. But I mean, touring around South America, for example, and seeing seeing that it's very important for fans who don't speak like very good English to be able to understand and relate to the to the lyrics is very important for them. So uh, so that was the idea, pretty much, to give the fans an opportunity to uh, to understand and relate to the lyrics. Being Brazilian. I don't speak Spanish, I speak Portuguese, so I yeah, I was kind of left out of the the <laughs> yeah, well, I'm sorry about that. I don't speak very good Portuguese. I I I, I can't speak Portuguese. Otherwise, maybe if you'll learn that someday you will have a Portuguese version as well. Maybe the next album. But it's something that we are different culturally from the other uh, South American countries because they really stand by singing in in their own language yeah. while in brazil that's a minimal part of bands that, that do this mostly we go to, to english yeah well yeah I've, I've noticed that it's very the brazil is very different to the to the spanish part of south america for example um you can clearly tell that it's a different attitude uh, and the like the the countries Chile, Argentina, Paraguay, and those kind of countries—they they they seem to stick together in, in a way that kind of excludes Brazil. But um, yeah, it's cultural. I don't know. I'm no expert. Yeah, uh, but I can I can I can see what you mean. But you're right. Yeah. And are you ready to sing your whole life set in Spanish when touring those areas? Um. Yeah, maybe. Uh, it depends on. If people want to hear it like this, or if uh, they want to hear the English versions, I, I don't know yet. It depends on how it's received. And you have a new member on board. Yeah. In fact, he's not that new anymore. Exactly. As I saw him, I saw him feeling for you on the From Beyond European Tour in 2015. Yeah. A lineup change is always difficult, but was it easy to choose Jonathan as the new Enforcer guitarist? Yeah, because we already been playing together for a couple of years, so that was like a very easy thing to do. Yeah, you have Jonathan now, but I heard I read your touring plans will be focused more in playing festivals through Europe. While I prefer watching a full set, I understand your reasoning. I remember seeing Enforcer playing live in the Netherlands, where I live now, in 2015, and there were not many people on on the venue, while two years before you played for a couple of thousand in Brazil. Yeah, um, well, where, where was that? It was um, in, in the Netherlands, Leiden, I think it was. Oh yeah, that was, that was weird. Netherlands is weird, because that was like, I remember that show, it was like really poor attendance at that show, but then we played in Eindhoven the day after, and it was like completely full, so... I don't know what was up with that show and why people didn't come out to that show. Super weird. Um, but uh, Eindhoven was great, actually, um, as far as I can remember. But uh, yeah, I know we will. I, we haven't really decided yet. That's the thing. But I mean, the, the dates we have announced for now is the festival dates. And that's what we're focusing on doing right now. Um, if it comes up, if something like better comes up later, then we might jump on to that but uh i mean we're uh we're not like 20 anymore we can't just like jump on every tour offer and play like play like maniacs you know um we have to like consider be really considerate with what we're playing and what we're doing and i think that's going to be good in the for the band in the long run to just not take anything but actually take good offers and i hope i can see you on this tour Again, my third time seeing Enforcer. Yeah. 
uh, if possible, with a full set. Yeah, uh, we play this Dockham open air in Netherlands, I think. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually very interested in going because... It also has King Diamond. Yeah, King Diamond is headlining and this is my favorite band. But yeah. the to be honest with you, I think... It's expensive. <laughs> it's expensive and it has King Diamond and Forcer and I think one or two more bands that I would like to see in a lineup of, I don't know, 20, 30 bands. Yeah. So it's, yeah, it is what it is. It's a very mixed festival, I see. Yeah. It's time for the second and last Enforcer song of the day. Olaf, what's your choice for us? We can maybe do uh, Zenith of the Black Sun.
know we have different opinions about this by reading to some of your interviews, but how do you see this new generation of bands playing heavy metal influenced by the 80s? Oh, very good question. I think it started out like something really, really good um, back in 2005 when it was a bunch of bands who were like doing it very like full of inspiration, full of like uh, full of creativity, both. And, and it was honest to to the style and to the but but also it was creative and innovative um, like us. It was in solitude. It was uh, portrait. It was Helvetet's port, and it was Cauldron from Canada. And uh, I really adore all of these bands because I think all the bands did have something very unique to them. Um, and uh, I was like very proud of being like a part of a revival of real music. But for like ev it's, it's like for every new wave of people of, of bands that were coming out playing like this type of this type of music it, it's also seemed that it just became more and more generic and uh, you know and and in the end like the bands that been following us i mean i i really appreciate that people get inspired by us and i i'm honored to see so many like bands who who got inspired by what we're doing and i think there's a lot of bands who have a great potential to become something great in the future but what i think is that nine bands out of ten don't really have any identity at all um but they they lose themselves in in uh, in trying to live up to like a set of invisible rules of what you can do and what you can't do when you are a heavy metal band it's like they decide first that oh we want to play heavy metal then we have to blah 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 and we can't blah 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 and then it's already there they're putting up so much boundaries for themselves it's just gonna it's just turning out super generic and and super like predictable and boring um, I think that more bands need to find what makes them unique and do that to 100% in order for it to be interesting. Because for me, most of it just comes out as almost like a parody of the genre, to be honest. I have contact with these bands almost daily because of the, yeah. the channel. And yeah, but I mean, for... don't get me wrong. There, There's like, I, I, I just... There's a there's plenty of good bands among like the the like a, a new generation of heavy metal bands. Don't get me wrong, there it's just that it's so many that like really have no identity at all. But I I really appreciate a lot of the bands as well. I I just need to say that. But but like with all genres, there's like everything isn't good. It's like with thrash metal. I you know Exodus is great, Metallica is great, but you know. This there's so much like bands who are just like pure shit in thrash metal too because it's like once once it loses like the identity and and like the edge everything falls I think when I was uh, listening to Enforcer back in the day and I I always thought you guys had something that many bands lack. That's the songwriting ability. And this is still something that I think that the band should look for. Because I, I know that many of, the, many of them can play really well, but sometimes they don't have the songs to make it. I, I think that most, most other bands are very afraid of, of like trying to explore a little bit deeper. I, I get the feeling that so so many of them kind of they just listened to Iron Maiden and Judas Priest, and then they made then 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 for an album they make ten cover versions of Aces High, you know. That's how I feel about many many bands. You can sort of oh, there's the twin leads. Oh, that's the high voice. Oh, that's the that's the C D E C D E chorus, and then it's over, you know. 
Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, not not the, the musical part, but the the rest I can understand. Yeah. 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 But it's it's the same. I was talking to some friends of mine saying that people listen to Judas, to Judas Priest and they want to play only Electric Eye or Screaming for Vengeance. Yeah, exactly. But no, exactly. But yeah. Nobody pay, nobody plays Pain and Pleasure. Take this chains off, for example. Exactly, or beyond the realms of death, or dream, or deceiver, or something that that really makes Judas Priest great. But it's almost like people forget about that Judas Priest was actually a band who had so much variety to their sound, and that's also what made them so great. Yes. Um, now I have only one question more about Zenit, and we can call it uh, a day. Uh, because I, I need to be honest with you, and uh, I listened to Zenith uh, for a few weeks now. Not much, because I have to define my attention with other releases, but it's still uh, a difficult listening. And But I think, and I want your opinion about this, that the album, different from the others, I think it's a grower. Yeah, I think it's... Uh, it, it might... <laughs> Well, I think what I think now I said think five times, but uh, I, I think um, I think if you have like if you expect it to sound in a certain way um, and it's not sounding like you expect it to, then it will be a grower because it's not bad songs. Um, I think very many people who come up to me and say that they are disappointed is people who only heard like two songs of us before and they, they think they know what we sound like and then they expect us to put out like a super generic, super edgy speed metal album and they found, whoa, it's not speed metal all the time. Oh no, I'm angry and I'm not gonna, you know. <laughs> but if you have listened to us before, you know that we have a lot of things going on in our style and that is not only focused on pure speed, but almost like we have that element, of course, but we've never only had that element. And that's the thing with the new album that we've tried to keep. We tried to make, we, we, we've made an album that is, that everyone who listens to rock and metal should find something in it to appreciate from the most retrograded, retarded, like uh, old school worshippers to people who actually like more more uh, accessible music to people who like heavy music to people who like epic music to people who like like guitar based music or or like uh, you know guitar masturbators or you know it's it's an album for everyone who who likes rock and metal and i hope to come to talk to you in a few weeks or months when i see you live and say that now I really understand and now I really like Zenith. And maybe some people will do the same. I hope so. I think that uh, once you get over like like your your own expectations, um, it y you will appreciate it. Because um, it's meant to be to the fans. And uh, if you liked Diamonds, for example, that we already talked about, I think that you would love Zenith because it goes in the same like direction, pretty much, I would say. But also, I remember how much shit we got when we released Diamonds in 2010, how much people hated on it because they thought it was like, they thought we were a sellout band who had songs like Running in Menace or or We Slow Down and we were fucking wimps that, or Katana was a boring song. It was just like six minutes of of the same beat and, and that we had a like party all night attitude in other songs but you know that those just like a fraction of things that we that we got told from releasing diamonds because people expected something in style of into the night but um you know diamonds grew and and eventually i think it's like looking back on it and see what people tell us and, and what fans think it's it's uh, probably our most classic album this is actually something that i was trying to research uh, some time yeah. ago, I was trying to research albums that we like uh, yeah. nowadays 
that yeah. when they were released in the 80s, they got bad reviews. I think pretty much all of everything that everything that everything that uh, that broke the trends or like that was different and innovative always have been like rejected first. Like when you see reviews of of Venom, for example, it was just like pure garbage because people didn't understand what they were doing. Or when when even Metallica, that how 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 people worked or the business like worked against them in the first place or yeah whatever you know everything that is like new and innovative gets gets uh, shouted at thank you so much Olaf, for the this interview it was very nice to talk to you thank you very much it was a pleasure indeed our interview with Olaf may be finished but the episode's not done yet because now we're going to listen to a mini interview with Mike Leprosy from Iron Curtain, a band from Spain. Hello guys, we are here with Mike Leprosy from Iron Curtain and we are going to talk about the new Iron Curtain album. Mike, what can you tell us about it? Hello, thank you so much for the interview and the, and the moment to talk with the, with the uh, people that uh, listen to the new ways of traditional heavy metal channel. Well, uh, we are working right now in the new Iron Curtain record. Uh, we think that this is the best song that we made uh, till date. Um, this sounds like a fucking 1984, and this is a promise that we're gonna blow your fucking mind. Uh, trying to imagine that we are working with the peace of mind, power slave, Ferro maiden, with violence on force of Exciter. Uh, we tend to mix a speaking metal song with some classic heavy metal songs. Uh, sounds really catchy. Uh, we are fucking happy with the new stuff because it's really, really personal, really intense. Uh, we, ha we have a lot of plans about this, this new record. Uh, gonna be released with Dying Victim Records on vinyl, CD, and tape. and. And well, uh, will be a lot of surprise about the future. Uh, so we have to kick your fucking ass. And how far is the the album already done? Well, uh, very good question. Uh, the, the record is uh, was written in between December and April, uh, December in 2018 and uh, April uh, 2018. So in a few months, I I took all the ideas, I organized the the sound, all the concepts. Um, uh, I took I uh, sorry I was talking with the band, um, and everything had to be really natural, really fluid. Uh, in a few months, we have um, writing uh, all the stuff, um, and we are extremely happy because we the, the influence come from movies, from books. Uh, I have read in the in the few in the few months. Um, I think it's the best uh, Iron Curtain time. So you are telling me that the album will be produced, mixed by Oscar from Ren. Right? Yeah, absolutely true. Uh, Oscar and me, we are very good friends from a many years ago, and and I say, Oscar, this is the material. Uh, are you in? And he say, please, I want to produce it. I want to work with you guys because uh, he trusts in the material uh, as, we, as, as, as much as we are. Um, uh, we, go, we will be going to send to, to the Black Path Studios, it's the name of the studio, the RAN staff. Um, and I am completely sure that he's gonna make a great uh, fucking heavy metal uh, stuff. So, and you have another project, that's the Gate of, Gates of Damnation magazine. Yeah. I have one here. Can you tell us what's the concept behind the, the magazine? Well, uh, I have been doing magazine the last 15, almost 18 years ago. Uh, Headbangers magazine or another newsletter. But uh, nowadays I have a more uh, soft life after my job and my my, my baby so I decided to uh, take again my magazine because it's like a fucking psychologist 
I like to, to talk with band. I love to uh, write about bands. I love to work on the design. So uh, I, in the, in the first time I spoke with Rand, as a good friend, so Vulture Benjans, anti Christ from Sweden, um, uh, Sorts, uh, thank you, uh, from Brazil, Flagelador, uh, Bang from Spain, Temptation from, from France, uh, On Sabir from Australia. Um, uh, it's a, it's a, a really old school magazine inspired with the desecration of Virgin Tales of the Massacre of Slayer magazine from the 80s. And now I spent the second number in October because it's gonna blow your fucking mind. And if someone wants to buy the, the magazine, how he, how can he do? Yes, uh, we don't have uh, an standard distribution, a standard mail order. Uh, for example, in this festival, in Keep It True, we have in the, in the merch stand a few uh, dealers like Cur del Sur or No Remos have a few copies. So the, the best time or the best moment is to, to break through the Facebook webpage, it's Gates of the Nation. And in the message, they can uh, write us. And until now, we have spread like 400 copies of the magazine. So in two months, 400 copies for a, a paper and uh, underground newsletter is, I think it's okay. It's very nice. Yeah. So uh, thank you so much, yeah. Mike, and it's nice to talk to you. Thank you so much uh, for the question, for the support, and long life to new wave of traditional heavy metal channel. Um, please continue the good work because you deserve a metal need you. Yeah, I can wait to share the new Iron Curtain album on the channel. Thank you so much, man. Thank you. And to finish the episode, we have two smaller interviews. The first one with Federico from Witch Hunter. And the other question is for Dennis and Fabian from Defender from Germany. We are here with Federico from Witch Hunter from Italy. They released Back on the Hunt in 2016. It's the latest album and it's available on the channel. Last year they released an split with Black Evil called Each Evil Attack. And now Federico, we'll talk about the new plans for the band. Yes, we'll uh, release a new album in tw uh, 2020 uh, for Blasphemous Art Records label and uh, like ever will be an album uh, of heavy metal, pure heavy metal in uh, the best tradition for sure. <laughs> And do you have a release date or something that you are planned to next year keep it through? Yeah, I don't know the, the dates of release. I hope that uh, will be have available in uh, 2020, yeah. And uh, we for sure, we play some live show in Europe during uh, uh, these years. Okay, and the next year and uh, we are only waiting for new album okay. I can't wait to hear the new Witch Hunter so uh, make sure it's good man uh, okay. thank you so much for talking to me and see you see you and the long live of new wave of traditional heavy metal full albums Air for Leather <laughs> Uh, we are here with uh, Fabian and Dennis from Defender, from Germany, and we're going to talk about their new 7-inch, which is coming up in... August. August. So it's two songs? Yeah, it's two songs. We have two songs, uh, and the 7-inch is called Beyond Darkness. Beyond Darkness. So Beyond Darkness by Defender in August, July. A seven inch, it will be an independent release, right? Yes, of course. The last independent release. <laughs> the last. <laughs> yeah. And then after the seven inch, you're going to uh, focus on the full length. Yeah. yeah, that's correct. We want to release the full length album in next year, 2020. Great. And uh, I posted your demo, uh, Rising High, on the channel, New Wave and have metal full albums and how was the reaction for the from the fans it was really good we we uh, got a lot of uh, orders from all around the world and yeah it was really great to have to uh, have the album posted on your youtube channel uh, thank you so much guys thanks so much 
Fabian, thanks so much, Dennis, and I hope to see you guys play at Keep It True someday. We'll do so. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> That's it, guys. I'm really happy with this episode, and I almost forgot to give a shout out to Sarah, Sarah King Terrihan from Banger TV, and also the lead singer from Smolder my favorite album of the year she became a patreon from the last episode to this one so I want to give her a shout out and if you want to become a patron you can do so by going to the link on the description and donating to the channel and if you don't do patreon you can also donate via paypal it's also on the description thank you so much and see you next